This video program refers to the catalog as the Genealogical Library Catalog, or the GLC. After this program was produced, the name of the catalog was changed to the Family History Library Catalog. The information in this program still applies to using the library's catalog. Only the name of the catalog has been changed. Hello, I'm Martha Ann Frazier. I've been doing some research on my great-grandfather, David Frazier. You may be looking for something about one of your ancestors, too. You know, here in the genealogical library, there are millions of records. Some of them may have some information about your family. Finding these records can be easy if you use this. This is the Genealogical Library Catalog, or the GLC. The GLC is a catalog that lists and describes the records in the genealogical library. There are hundreds of records described on each of these microfiche. And whether you're in the main or a branch genealogical library, this GLC is your key to finding records of your family. Today, I'm going to show you how to use it. Before using the catalog, you need to identify what you already know and set a research goal. Write the names, dates, and places that you already have on a pedigree chart. This makes it easy to see what's missing. Then, decide what information you want to look for. For example, I've decided to look for more information about my great-grandfather, David Frazier. All I know is his name, where he was born, and an approximate date. I'd like to find this missing information, and maybe some more about his parents. Now I'll write this goal on my research log. A research log is used to keep track of records you search and the information you find. After selecting your goal, you need to decide what records you want to search for. The library has two basic types of records, previous research and original documents. Previous research is research that has already been done by others, such as a family history. You usually search previous research first because it can save you a lot of time. Original documents are records that were created at the time of important events in your ancestors' lives. For example, a local church or government office may have recorded their births, christenings, marriages, and burials. Okay, great. Thanks very much for your help. Appreciate it. It's a good idea to ask a librarian which records to search first. I'll start by looking for previous research, like a family history. And then I'll look for original documents that might give me more information about David and his parents. Now I'm ready to use the catalog. The GLC will tell me which of these records are available at the Genealogical Library. The GLC has four sections. Surname, locality, subject, and author title. The surname section lists records under the name of the family. You can use it to see if the library has any histories or biographies about your family. The locality section lists records by the place they are from or about. Use this section if you know where your ancestors lived and you want to see records from that place, such as birth, marriage, or census records. The subject section lists records by topic. Here you'll find information about religions, ethnic groups, historical events, and much more. And finally, the author title section. This is the best place to find a record if you already know the author or the title. Finding a record in the GLC is about the same in each section. There are three basic steps. Let's take a look at them first, and then we'll see how they apply to each section. The first step is to select the microfiche you need. Second, scan through the entries and see if there are any records listed that will help you. And third, 
write down a brief description of the information you need to obtain that book or film. With this information, you can find the record in the main library, or your branch librarian can help you order a microfilm copy. Now, let's see how these steps apply. I'm going to start in the surname section to see if the library has a history or a biography about my Frasers. The surname section lists records by the name of the family. The first step is to locate the microfiche that lists the Frasers. The names are listed alphabetically. Here, on the top, is the first surname on the fiche. Here is Fletcher, Foster, and Freeman. Frazier fits here, between Foster and Freeman. Since these names are the first on the fiche, Frazier will be listed on the fiche labeled Foster. The next step is to scan the fiche and find the Frasers. Entries are arranged in columns from top to bottom and left to right. This is what an entry looks like. In the upper left corner of each entry is a heading that tells you the name the record is listed under. Here's Frank's, Frazy, Frazier. There are several Frasers. Now I'll need to read through the entries and see if they're about my family. Here's one. This is a history about Francis Frazier, a blacksmith and a Quaker who lived in Iowa. I don't know who Francis Frazier was, but my great-grandfather David lived in Iowa, and he was a Quaker. This book has an index, so I can probably search it very quickly. At the bottom are some other families mentioned in the book. Oh, I recognize Hersberger as a family name. I'll definitely want to look at this. In the upper right corner is the library's call number. I'll need this complete number to find the book. The next step is to write down the author, title, the call number, and a brief description in my research log. Now, I'll expand my search by looking for spelling variations. It's fairly common for the same family to spell his name in several different ways. For example, there are about 20 variations of Fraser that I know of. Some spell Fraser with a Z-E-R, S-E-R, S-O-R, and so on. So I may find some more records about the Fraser family by checking other spellings. Let's see. Here's a Fraser family with an S-E-R who lived in Iowa. I think I'll look at this one too. Notice this item nine. This tells me that this record is the ninth item on the microfilm. So I'll be sure to make a note of that. Since this record is on microfilm, I can order it through a branch genealogical library. Of all the Fraser records that I see here, I think these two are my best choices. Now I'm ready for the final step, getting the record. Here in the main library, you can find books and films on the shelf by matching the numbers. Here it is. A David Frazier is listed on page 127. Here's David Frazier, and his father is Isaiah. David was born in Pleasant Plain, Jefferson County, Iowa in 1867, and here are his brothers and sisters. This must be my great-grandfather. This is great! Now, I'll write what I found on my research log, and I'll add what I can to my pedigree chart. As you look for a family history, Remember that the catalog lists only the primary names in a family history. If your specific family or individual doesn't appear, like David Frazier, look for families with the same name who lived in the same place and about at the same time. Keep in mind also that you probably won't find a history for every family, but it's worth checking the surname section first. Now that we've checked previous research, let's look for some original documents under the locality section. This is a good place to look for births, marriages, wills, and other records of your family. In the locality section, records are listed under where they are from or about. 
In order to use this section, you will need to know about where your family lived and a time period when they lived there. For example, I know that David Fraser was born in Pleasant Plain, Jefferson County, Iowa, in 1867. With this information, I can now look for the records of Pleasant Plain, of Jefferson County, and of the state of Iowa. I can also look at United States records. Different records are listed under each of these places. It's a good idea to check all of them. The librarian advised me to start with the most specific place I know, the town, and then look for county, state, and country records. We'll use the three steps we learned earlier and see what's available for Pleasant Plain. The first step is to select the right microfiche. In the locality section, there is a set of microfiche for each country. In the case of the United States and Canada, there are additional sets for each state and province. For example, there are three fish in the set for Iowa. Records are listed on these fish according to the size of the locality. Records for the state are listed first, then the first county alphabetically, then the cities within that county, then the next county and its cities, and so on. Records of Pleasant Plain will be listed under Iowa, the state, Jefferson, the county, then Pleasant Plain. Let's look at the labels on the microfiche and see which one will have Pleasant Plain. The first microfiche begins with the state of Iowa. The second fiche begins with the records of Iowa, county of Des Moines, city of Burlington, church records. The third microfiche starts with the state of Iowa, county of Muscatine, probate records. Now, since Jefferson County begins with a J, it will come after Des Moines and before Muscatine. So, we'll find the records of Jefferson County and its cities on the second fiche. Now, let's scan through the headings to find Pleasant Plain. Here's Franklin County, Hamilton County, and Jefferson County. I'll go to the end of the Jefferson County records to where the cities are listed. Here's Abingdon, Fairfield, and Pleasant Plain. You'll notice that the headings in the locality section have two parts. The first part is the name of the place, and the second part is the type of record. There are three records listed here for Pleasant Plain. A church history, church records, and a history. Now I'll read through these to see if any of them will be helpful. The church history is about the Society of Friends, also called Quakers. David and Isaiah were Quakers, so I'll want to write this one down. The church records are of the Presbyterian Church, so I doubt that they'll help me. The history is of the town of Pleasant Plain. I'll write it down as well. After looking for records listed under the town, I can expand my search to records of nearby towns, the county, and the state. In the United States, many records are kept on the county level. Here's Jefferson County. The types of records are listed alphabetically. Here are some biographies, some cemetery records, census records, a history of the county, and land and property records kept by the county. Let's look at these for a minute. These records cover the years 1839 to 1932. Since my Frasers were farmers, and they moved there in 1867, there's probably a record of them buying or selling land. There are 36 rolls of microfilm, so I'll want to use an index if there is one. I'll start with this general index that covers the years 1863 to 1872. This is the microfilm number. 
The index will then tell me which of these volumes of deeds to search. Let's see what else there is for Jefferson County. Here are military records, naturalization, and some county probate records. This might be interesting. Here's a collection of wills from Jefferson County. They are from the time period when my family lived there. And there are indexes at the beginning of each volume. You'll notice that this volume doesn't have a film number. When an item appears like this, it will be found on the film listed above. Here are some vital records. Vital records include births, marriages, and deaths. This is a collection of county marriage records. It tells me that most volumes have indexes, and there is also a general index. These are only some of the records you may find under the county. You'll find additional records listed under the state and the country. The state, for example, may have cemetery records, military files, and other collections and indexes. On the fiche for the United States, you'll find census records, passenger lists, immigration records, and other important sources. Now that we've seen an example of using the locality section for the United States, let's see how it works for another country. When I looked up my Frasers in Iowa, I knew the state, the county, and the town. But I have an ancestor who lived in Germany around 1860, and all I know is that the name of the town where she lived was Schlegel. I don't know if Germany had states or counties, or even if it was called Germany at that time. At the beginning of each set of microfiche are C references that can help me. C references tell me how to look up the town in the GLC. To find how Schlegel is listed, I'll go to the first part of the Germany microfiche and look it up. The reference tells me to look under Germany, Preussen, Schlesien, Schlegel. Even though I'm not familiar with the levels of locality for Germany, the places are still listed from large to small, like the United States. In this case, Preussen was the name of the country at that time. Schlesien is the counterpart of the state, and Schlegel is the town. Now that I know how to look up Schlegel, finding the right microfiche is the same as before. Everything's listed alphabetically. I look for Preussen first. Here's Germany, Baden. Germany, Hessen. Germany, Preussen. There are several fiches that list the records of Preussen. Now that I've found Preussen, I need to find the state of Schlesien. Here's Brandenburg, Hanover, Rhineland, and Schlesien. Now I'll look for the town of Schlegel. Here's Geltendorf, Mittelwald, Warta. Let's see, Q, R, S. Schlegel comes after Mittelwalde, so it will be on this fish. Now scan the headings. There are two types of records here, church records and civil registration. Notice that the entries are basically the same as all the others we've looked at. Here's the heading, a brief description, the years covered, and the film numbers. Records are described in the same language they're written in, so these records are described in German. For those who don't read German, there are also notes in English. As you can see, there's a lot of valuable information in the locality section, and it isn't hard to use. Whether you're dealing with counties or kingdoms, the rules are the same. Just remember these few basic points. Records are grouped by location and are listed from large to small. For example, state first, then the county, then town. Remember to search at each level so you don't miss any important records. 
If you don't know how to look for a location, use the C references at the beginning of each set of microfiche. And remember, don't hesitate to ask a librarian. Now, let's look at the subject section. The subject section lists topics that are not limited to a single locality or family. The records listed here are about religions, ethnic groups, historical events, occupations, and other broad subjects. Reading these microfish labels will give you some idea of what's in this section. Baptists, Confederate States of America, English poetry, Huguenots, Indians of North America, Ireland, land reform, political science, Sauk Indians. Now these are just the first items on the fish. There are hundreds of subjects in between. Since David and Isaiah Frazier were Quakers, I could look up Quakers as a subject. The subjects are listed alphabetically, so choosing the right microfiche is the same as in the other sections. There are several entries for Quakers. Here's one about the Quakers of Iowa. Even if my family isn't listed in here, it may give me some background information about the way they worshipped and lived. It may also give me some ideas on where to look for other records. This is the author title section. The records found in the other sections are listed here under author and title. Choosing a microfiche and scanning the headings are the same as in the other sections because they're listed in alphabetical order. If you know the author or the title, using this section is usually the fastest way to find a record. For example, I could have found this book about the Frasers by looking under the name of the author, Zelda Schwarzkopf Frazier. An author may be more than one person, such as a group of people, or an organization. For example, the Iowa State Historical Society is listed here as the author of several publications. Titles are interfiled alphabetically with authors. For example, just before the Iowa State Historical Society is the title Iowa State Almanac and Statistical Register for 1860. If you want to see if the library has a specific title or if you know an author, use this section. Well, now we've looked at all four sections of the GLC and we've found four different ways to find records. The surname section is a good way to find family histories. The locality section lists records of the places where your ancestors lived. This is the best place to find original documents such as births, marriages, wills, and deeds. The subject section lists broad topics like religious and ethnic groups. I found a book about Quakers of Iowa. The author title section lists records under their authors and titles. This is usually the fastest way to find a record if you already know that information. Remember that even though the four sections are different, you use the same basic rules to search them. The first step is to select the microfiche you need. Second, scan through the entries and see if there are any records listed that will help you. And third, write down a brief description and the information you need to obtain that book or film. With this information, you can find the record in the main library or order it through your branch library. I've only spent a little time with the genealogical library catalog and already I have a list of records to look at. And I found some things I could add to my pedigree chart that I didn't know before. Now it's your turn to use the catalog and find some information about your family. Oh, and if you have problems, this booklet has filing rules and examples that may help you. And remember, don't hesitate to ask a librarian. There are millions of records available in the genealogical library. Some of them may have information about your family. The genealogical library catalog is your key to finding them.